What is the most bulls thing you have ever been taught? My 8th grade social studies teacher told us all kinds of garbage. The best were, salmon is not an animal. He asked on a quiz to name three animals that Lewis and Clark ate on their expedition. Everyone wrote salmon and he marked everyone wrong because if I accepted that, I'd have to accept spiders too. He didn't know much about biology. Washington DC was carved out of Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware. There are clinical studies done in horses that support that masturbation causes blindness. Catholic school science teacher. Saturn is the only planet that has rings. This was in, like 1984. I raised my hand and said that I had a book on planets at home and it said that Jupiter had rings too but they're small and hard to see. The teacher chastised me for lying and told me to be quiet. Next day she tells the class that she had gone to the library, looked it up, and discovered that I wasn't lying. Jupiter has rings. She apologized. So that went better than most of the stories in this thread. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune have rings. There's an asteroid called Chiriplo that also has. When I used to do chores my dad told me that I couldn't vacuum with the TV on or it would suck the color out of the screen. In middle school I had a teacher tell us that America was the only free country in the world. Confused I said that plenty of countries like Canada, Japan, England, and Australia seem plenty free to me. She responded by saying that they aren't really free because they don't elect their own leaders. Even as a kid I was pretty sure that was wrong but didn't call her on it. In first grade I was taught 1-2 was impossible and could not be done. This was after getting in trouble for not counting with my fingers. Writes a small n when the class only has been taught capital letters yet. Whole class shouts wrong. Quite a traumatizing experience. My wife would tell me for the longest that she didn't like watermelon. Whatever just meant there was more for me. Flash forward some time and I'm talking with her dad about watermelon and I mention how she doesn't like it. He looks me in the eye and says that's cause when they, her and siblings, were younger I gave them the crappy parts of the watermelon so they wouldn't steal it from me. In that moment I knew El Diablo had a carnal form. If you can't jump very high, it's because of the mass of the air above your head. There is nowhere above your head on the moon, that's why you can jump higher. You can't really say it's false when you're 7 yo. Seem legit though. Look I wouldn't say taught. Because no one believed it at the time. But we had this teacher that avidly believed the world was flat. He was the type of guy that owned a emu and marked you down if your handwriting was slanted. I once had a teacher in a second grade who was adamant that Melbourne was the capital of Australia. It's not by the way. Now I knew better and swiftly called her out on this. Nabbles miss. It's Canberra. The teacher then just said I was lying to everyone and told everyone in the class not to believe my lies. How can people like this teach our kids? Stubborn B. But, Melbourne, or Sydney instead, should be the capital of Australia. Canberra freaking sucks. In kindergarten we were learning simple math. Some of the questions were, 1 2 equals, and 4 8 equals. So naturally being a smart kid I wrote minus 1 and minus 4 to answer those questions. I was marked wrong because you don't learn about negative numbers yet. The fact I still remember this shows how much I hate our education system for doing that to me. When I asked my math and physics teacher in high school how we measure the distance to stars and galaxies, she told me they were bouncing lasers off them. She wasn't stubborn though and told me she'd look it up until next period. She had to have a degree in both to teach it. I have no idea how she managed that. Really nice though. My dad once told my brother off for laughing at people on TV with pixelated faces and told him that they had a really serious medical condition. My brother believed it 100%. He's also 21. I was in first grade and my teacher told the class that the moon was made of Swiss cheese. At home we only had the free TV stations available since we were poor, so I was watching a lot of educational programs and documentaries. I was especially interested in our solar system and wanted to become a star and planet professor as I called it. So I was baffled and confused when my teacher said the moon was made of Swiss cheese. Guess most of my classmates were too but were too unsure to second guess her. Being a smart but I said but the moon is made of stones and rocks. To which she only replied number. Okay. A. 
This is a little different than the other things posted here, but here goes. My dad taught me at a young age that the stuffing inside of the turkey was not as good as the stuffing cooked outside of the turkey. So my dad, being a nice dude, would always eat the turkey edge stuffing. As I got older, I got bolder. So I tried the turkey edge stuffing. Bastard was a liar trying to keep the best stuffing for himself. Never trusted him after that. The best one here. You can now do this to your kids. You have all that stuffing to catch up on after all. 5 paragraph essays. Say what you're gonna say, say it, then say what you said. My very first English professor in college said he wishes he could undrill 4 years of writing them out of our heads. It's a good basic format. It's just one that requires a lot of deviation. Overall the theme to get across is that you should state your points off the bat, address them individually with more detail, and the provider wrap up. A marijuana cigarette has 8 times as much nicotine as one made of tobacco. Word for word my health teacher in elementary school. I before he except after C. Ah well freaking done school I can see the science behind that so clearly. I before he except after C. Or when sounding like A as in neighbor away, on weekends and holidays and all throughout May, and you'll always be wrong no matter what you say. Edit. Obligatory thanks for the gold. Now to wrap all of these boxing for Christmas. <laughs> Disclaimer. South American background. So this is probably one of many, many ridiculous superstitions of ancient Inca times my mother holds to this day. My mother used to believe, probably still does, that if you're catching a cold, you should put an onion in whatever rooms you frequent the most. The idea, I guess, is that the onion is supposed to suck up all the bad viruses and karma and whatnot and turn black. Which is when you're supposed to throw it away and be at peace knowing that you won't get sick. Obviously, this has never worked. Instead, the onion ends up sprouting and stinking up the place. She still swears by it, though. Every time we talk on the phone and I randomly sneeze, don't forget to put an onion out. My grade 7 teacher in primary school told me that my children would never see a red tomato in the flesh because of global warming. When I was 8 my dad told me that if I don't brush my teeth before bed a crap fairy would come and crap in my mouth and then I would taste it when I woke up. That sounds strange at first, but it actually would make sense. That when an ice cream van sounded its speakers, it meant that it was out of ice cream. That whenever you develop feelings for someone, your heart becomes attached to them. And if it doesn't end up working out between you, your heart is damaged permanently, making you ruined and worthless to a future spouse. In a religious education class I had when I was 15, the teacher was talking about the teleological arguments for God's existence. She said that because we were all different and all had different DNA we must have been designed by a higher power. As I took this class along with my identical twin brother, when she said that we all had different DNA, I kind of laughed and gestured towards my brother when she looked over. Her response was, yeah well perhaps you might have been designed to look the same but obviously you have different DNA inside you. Pretty much all of Scientology, even after fundamentally realizing that I bought, literally, a load of bull for a full 15 years of my life, I still have OMG moments when I find yet another fact that is pretty much the exact opposite of true. The most recent was that somehow fully facing people and staring at them. TR0 is supposed to be a good basis for excellent communication when it actually just creeps people out. One of my elementary school books claimed that when Teddy Roosevelt was shot that the only thing that saved him was a bible stuffed in his coat pocket that shielded his heart. Actually it was the script of the speech he was en route to which intercepted the bullet. It didn't stop the bullet but it did slow enough not to reach his heart and lungs. Teddy Roosevelt still delivered his speech which makes for a much more interesting story than the anecdote in my book but I imagine my school curriculum authors thought that wishful thinking and superstition were more important than a factual reporting of history. He delivered his speech for 3 hours and ended by acknowledging he had been shot and saying, it takes more than that to kill a bull moose, Teddy Roosevelt was the badassiest of badasses. My high school health teacher didn't believe in evolution. Therefore, when asked why we have fingernails, he couldn't just tell us they are modified claws. Instead, we were taught that they regulate body temperature. I was often told that their function was to protect the sensitive skin underneath. 
If that were truly the case, a more over-engineered feature I cannot imagine. I remember being taught a taste map of the tongue, that we have only 5 senses, and that deoxygenated blood is blue. That monopoly will bond your friendship. Nope. Lost my friends cause he doesn't want to admit to going bankrupt on my tile. Well thanks to Monopoly, and a fair amount of Civ 5, I know which friends I can trust, and which friends to keep close. In high school, my world history teacher and one Spanish teacher both told us that everyone in Spain talks with a lisp. False. And it's because there was a king like 700 years ago who was ashamed of his lisp so he made everyone in the country talk like him. Also ridiculously false. After going to college and studying Spanish and the linguistic history of Spanish and Spanish history and living in Spain I want to go back to my high school and spit right in all four of their filthy, lying eyeballs. One of my teachers insisted that the earth is further away from the sun during winter, saying that's why it's colder in winter than summer. They would not listen to me say that the southern hemisphere is in summer when the northern hemisphere is in winter. Friend told me that Ardvox and Antitas were the same animal. They're not even in the same order of mammals. We also learned that Neanderthals were unsophisticated morons who lit their back hair on fire when in reality they had a definitive culture and created art and even music. There is also convincing evidence they showed compassion and cared for their disabled and elderly. It's almost like they were human or something. Ex-wife is full of balls to teach our kid instead of just saying no. I have to undo the damage. The gum staying in your body thing is one. My personal favorite was don't chew your hair or you'll get worms. I have no idea why she thinks humans have worm lava in our hair, but she's an addict now and out of my child's life, which is nice. Don't chew your hair or you'll get a trichobazor. I had a science teacher in my freshman year of high school that basically taught us to believe the conspiracies he does. We spent about 2 or 3 months learning about how the 9-11 attacks were an inside job. His sources for this? That YouTube video Loose Change was his source material. We were also taught that aliens are walking around with us every day and that they are called star children. But one day I bright up the matrix as a joke and he took me seriously and went on for about 20 minutes talking about how we may be in the matrix right now. Last I heard he was starting a black student union. I'm kinda surprised he's still teaching there but, when you're the teacher's representative, I guess you can get away with a lot. There is no such thing as a square root of a negative number. Also, the asymptote is a line which the graph of a function never touches. But this seems to be a major problem with math teachers. Actually, well there's no real root. There's nothing smaller than atoms, said with a beatific smile, as if it were the most obvious thing in the world. Sweet lord, I hated fifth grade. Being from the developing country, that traditional economic science didn't apply to the third world, that we needed our very own economic theories, as if wealthy countries were never once poor, it's hard to even calculate the amount of damage this has done to countries in Africa and Latin America, rather than accepting economic common sense that, you know, people react to incentives. Our teachers would try to come up with alternative explanations for our poverty from their developing asses. I'm from India and I can attest this. Most of these theories come from the false assumption that a third world economy is a zero sum game. That everyone should be punished because one person in your group did something wrong. I guess that means that all Middle Easterners should be killed because less than 1% of them are terrorists. A friend of mine once threw a basketball accidentally at a teacher. He asked who did the guy fest and said it was an accident. We all got detention. In middle school a science teacher told my class that you pronounce diaphragm diaphragm. Some kid even tried to correct her in class and she just laughed. Said it that way for the rest of the year. My kindergarten teacher told me that it was unhealthy to breath through my nose so I became an intentional mouth breather. Columbus discovered the Americas. Cough vikings. When he arrived the natives and the white people got along so well that they all brought food to share and invented thanksgiving cough genocide. Then he called the native people Indians because he liked the name. Cough thought he was in India, and told all his crew about the amazing name he came up with. Cough threatened to kill them if they said otherwise. 
that glass is actually a very slow moving liquid and that's why very old windows are thicker at the bottom. This bulls was taught to me by my high school science teachers no less. P.S. The real reason is actually because old plate glass windows were made by spinning molten glass into flat planes. It caused it to be thicker towards the center. The glass was then cut into window panes, and they were sometimes a little thicker on one side, not necessarily the bottom. We used to learn that lemmings would just commit mass suicide every year in an effort to curb their own population so that there would be enough to eat for the remaining lemmings in the harsh tundra. Turns out a scientist had just made it up and nobody ever questioned whether or not this ridiculous practice was legit. I think it was taken out of textbooks a little over a decade ago. In England we had this subject called humanities. In that subject our teacher taught us that the world is flat. Our task was to write an essay on that. Everyone except one got an F due to agreeing that the world is flat, when we were supposed to argue that it is really a sphere. This was supposed to teach us that we shouldn't always trust the teacher. Karma. Or the general concept that you get what you deserve. I watched one of the most kind-hearted friends of mine die from cancer at 26. Yet see far too many buttholes not only getting away with but actively being rewarded for their bulls. Not a Hindu, but I'm pretty sure that in the traditional sense of the word karma, you get what you deserve after you die. Having lots of good karma means climbing up the cosmic ladder faster. Stop, drop and roll. As a kid I thought catching fire was a serious epidemic. Judging by the number of demonstrations and frequency the topic was discussed. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.